Uh, before we move any further, I want to welcome uh, more people back to the stage, people you've already seen uh, this afternoon. Terry Drusey smith thank you so much. Give her a big hand, Terry. <laughs> Trying to give her that look. Also, uh, Anthony B. Eton. Guys, come on to the stage when you get a chance. I know they're getting their microphones all situated backstage and also waiting for uh, Dr. Chris Gibbons to all come to the stage. There they are. Okay, there you go. Just switch room. How did they get over there? <clears throat> and I also want to welcome someone else on stage. Well, we're going to have, a, uh, like I said, the Q&A in a few minutes uh, with the questions that you guys have written on those cards. And I'm l really looking forward to hearing from what these guys have to say, but I'm looking forward to our next speaker as well. Governor Mike Pence is a lifelong Hoosier with legal, small business, and policy experience. He, of course, was elected the 50th governor of our state of Indiana in 2012. Governor Pence is dedicated to continuing Indiana on a pathway to success through fiscal responsibility, economic development, and educational opportunity for every Hoosier child. Governor Pence was raised in Columbus, Indiana, born and raised in Columbus, Indiana. He graduated from Columbus North High School, went, to graduate, went on to graduate from Hanover College in 1981, and he earned his JD from Indiana University, the School of Law there, in 1986. On a personal note, Governor Pence and First Lady Karen Pence have been married since 1985. They have three adult children, Michael, Charlotte, and Audrey. Please welcome to the stage, the governor of the state of Indiana, Mike Pence. Good to see you. Welcome home. Thank you so much. I appreciate <laughs> it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John. Well, thank you. Thank you, Carlos. Good to have you home and uh, wonderful to see uh, all of you out today. I got a great report this morning on uh, the conversation that we've had here at this uh, Labor of Love Infant Mortality Summit, and I couldn't be more grateful. Couldn't be more grateful uh, for all of your presence here today uh, and uh, especially for the, the team that we've assembled. Uh, uh, join me in thanking Dr. Jerome Adams and uh, Dr. John Werner uh, for their dedication to this issue and to the health and well-being of the people of Indiana. We appreciate you men each and every day. And to our panelists, uh, thank you for letting me jump in before the Q&A and uh, before lunch. It is uh, uh, it is a great privilege to have uh, men and women of your stature here to be a part of an ongoing conversation in the state of Indiana. And uh, uh, join me in thanking this distinguished panel and all of our speakers today for the role that they're playing in making this such an enriching day. This is the third annual Infant Mortality Summit, and we, we have renamed it the Labor of Love Infant Mortality Summit. And uh, I want to thank each and every one of you. Uh, who are in this room. Many of you were, have been at all of these gatherings. Uh, you are champions in your local community for health care. You represent a wide variety of health care providers from across the state of Indiana. And you are part of the fabric of what I believe is, without a doubt, uh, the best health care system for any state in the United States of America. We are proud of the health care that, uh, that all of you provide to the good people of our state each and every day. Um, and let me say uh, particularly uh, on this issue, uh, we all know the facts. We all know the heartbreak of infant mortality in the state of Indiana, but it's, it is useful, as this summit has done now, for the third year in a row, for us to pay more careful attention to what we already know. Indiana has the seventh worst infant mortality rate in the United States. Uh, 600 babies lose their lives each and every year before their first birthday. And uh, most heartbreakingly, not, not uh, all Hoosiers are impacted the same. In fact, as you'll hear discussed and have already heard discussed today, African-American children in Indiana are more than twice as likely as Caucasian babies to die in their first year. But you know, what brought me to this issue is not about statistics and numbers. Uh, it really is uh, personal for me. You know, I'm, I'm a governor of the state of Indiana. I've had the privilege of serving in a number of roles in a number of occupations. But people who know me well know that I got a Ph.D. in D.A.D. I'm just a dad. And what you may not know about us in our family is that uh, uh, a quarter century ago when Karen and I were just getting started, 
Uh, we had a lot of trouble uh, getting pregnant with our first one. We went through about six years of unexplained infertility. And by the time our, our son Michael came along, we, uh, you know, we had, had uh, gone through times when we thought we'd never be able to have children of our own. And it was a challenging time for us. But I'll never forget in that first year when we brought that little boy home, my greatest fear was that we would lose him in the first year. I remember it vividly. He's 23 years old now. He's a United States Marine. But those days were so precious and so tender to me. I can remember literally waking up, going straight to his crib to see if he was okay, having, having heard about sudden infant death syndrome. And, uh, and, and I, I don't know to this day if my wife was as anxious about that as I was. But for me, that was the worst possible outcome we could have imagined as a young family. And so after I became governor and I learned about where Indiana ranks, and I learned about the heartbreak of infant mortality in our state, we moved on it swiftly in our first year in office. We assembled the first summit on infant mortality. And, and as I'll describe here, we've been taking... Uh, decisive action over the last uh, two and a half years to confront this. But I just, I want you all to know that, that um, this is not just public policy to me, it's very personal. Because I cannot imagine, I cannot imagine a worse heartbreak for a mother or a father, or for a family to, to lose their joy, to lose their hopes, to lose their dreams uh, in the loss of the life of a most vulnerable one. And so, uh, and so three years ago, we began this initiative, uh, focusing on making reducing infant mortality the top priority in health care of our administration. And I do want to thank Dr. Adams and Dr. Warner uh, for embracing this policy and driving it forward. Uh, you all know our Labor of Love campaign was launched earlier this year with the help of, uh, of that first lady that I just mentioned, a state-led public information campaign to bring the public's attention to the issues surrounding the heartbreak of infant mortality. And it has had, we believe, some genuine success uh, in uh, informing women across the state of Indiana about the opportunities and, and, uh, and resources that are available for expectant mothers. Uh, we're also, we've also been doing a deep study in our administration through what what we set up more than a year ago, the Management Performance Hub. It is the, the first central data hub of any state government in the United States of America. And it, we're, we're drawing resources and data from sources all across the state of Indiana to analyze, uh, analyze and identify those uh, mortality risk factors. And, and we've developed some initial conclusions in the state of Indiana, and they've informed policy decisions that we've made and will continue to make. Uh, we all know that there are statistically significant patterns like inadequate prenatal care, low income, and, and young maternal age were shown to be the strongest predictors of adverse birth outcomes. It's one of the reasons why in this last session of the General Assembly, we signed a budget into law that dedicated more than $13 million for infant mortality prevention efforts. And we have several targeted initiatives that are already up and running to address the causes of this heartbreak. You all, I hope, already know about the Moms Helpline. It provides pregnant women and those of childbearing age with assistance in enrolling in HIP 2.0. Through the Moms Helpline, we connect these women uh, to more than 10,000 county-specific health and community service providers so families can easily access these services. The Baby and Me tobacco-free effort uses diaper vouchers to incentivize parents to quit smoking during pregnancy and, and after birth. And let me say, as I mentioned just a moment ago, uh, I couldn't be more proud of the partnership that we've had with our health care provider community in expanding and enrolling uh, underprivileged Hoosiers in HIP 2.0. You know, we worked over the last two years to find a way that we could, we could expand coverage in the state of Indiana for our, our most uh, uh, people that are challenged on the economic ladder of success. We found a way to do it like no other state has done, built not on mandates and taxes, but on personal responsibility, giving people an opportunity to, to uh, embrace uh, preventative health care and wellness. And uh, I'm pleased to say today, as we stand before you, that with the full collaboration of health care providers across the state, 
we have added to the roles of the Healthy Indiana Plan more than 200,000 Hoosiers in less than a year since we launched that program. I truly believe, I truly believe of all the initiatives that you'll talk about here today and all the things that we're doing, one of the things that both of these docs have told me on the stage and our team has told me is that, that getting more women, uh, particularly women who are in economically challenged situations into primary care, which the Healthy Indiana Plan makes it possible for them to do, is probably the best long-term solution uh, to reducing infant mortality in the state of Indiana. And so I urge you, I urge you to continue to spread the word about HIP 2.0 and encourage, encourage more Hoosiers, especially vulnerable women in this state, uh, to be a part of that program long before they become uh, pregnant. Uh, and uh, we've made some other changes as well. It, it would have been in 2014, modeled after what several other states had, had concluded, that we announced that Medicaid would no longer uh, no longer cover early elective C-sections before 39 weeks. We found that statistically low birth weight plays a role in infant mortality, and we've, uh, we, uh, uh, we implemented that policy, as I mentioned, last year. And so you can imagine how encouraged I was when yesterday the March of Dimes, a partner in this summit, released their annual report, and preterm births in Indiana declined from 11 percent to 9.5 seven percent over the last two years. We are making progress, <laughs> men and women. But we need to continue to work. Other programs like Centering Pregnancy and Early Start help women identify risk factors and get the prenatal care uh, that they need to improve their health and the health uh, of their uh, children. So uh, we'll continue to roll these programs forward. The Indiana State Department of Health, the Department of Child Services are also working together to expand uh, the availability of evidence-based home visiting programs in Indiana, so like the Nurse Family Partnership and the Healthy Families Indiana program. And I can assure you that we'll continue uh, to expand and develop those programs uh, uh, with, the, with the urgency that our circumstances uh, demands. So let me just close and, and turn the podium and the conversation uh, back to people who, uh, who know uh, this subject matter uh, more than I ever will. Um, but let me again, let me again thank you. Uh, thank you more than 700 strong from the four corners of the state of Indiana who've come here today to simply be a part of taking on the challenge of reducing infant mortality in the state of Indiana. Uh, I, I can't help but reflect on, uh, on the effort that we're making in the state of Indiana as an expression uh, of the deep compassion and care that is characteristic of all the people of Indiana. Our health care providers are, in so many ways, uh, the hands and hearts of the people of Indiana coming alongside some of the most vulnerable. And uh, since I believe that a society can be judged by how it deals with its most vulnerable, the work that we are doing to reduce infant mortality uh, has to be at the very heart of all that we're about in health care in the state of Indiana. So I'm here to tell you that uh, we're grateful. We're grateful for your engagement on this issue. Uh, we pledge uh, we, that we will continue to strive not only to raise awareness of the heartbreak of infant mortality, but also to continue to drive toward real results in reducing its incidence in our community. Uh, we will do it uh, because we are dedicated to improving the health and well-being of every Hoosier. But as I said at the outset, uh, we will do this because it is a labor of love. Uh, we will do this because uh, uh, here in Indiana, uh, we come alongside we come alongside uh, those that are facing challenges and uh, to, to, to be there with expectant mothers, to be there with new mothers and new parents, and to make sure that they have the information and that they have the support and to see those children grow up to be strong uh, and healthy and productive citizens uh, must continue to be our aim. We must not rest, we must not relent until we reduce the scourge of infant mortality here in the state of Indiana, and that's my pledge to you. So help us, God. Thank you very much. Thank you for your work on this issue and the difference you make in the lives of Hoosiers every day. God bless you all.